Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try to add fractions together. And it turns out adding fractions is a lot more difficult, more challenging than multiplying or dividing fractions. And it turns out when it comes to adding fractions, there's actually four different types of methods of how to add fractions depending upon what you're dealing with, what kind of fractions we're dealing with. So the four types are the following. The first type is where the denominators are the same. The second type is where the smaller denominators fit evenly into the largest of the denominators of the, of the fractions. The third type is the new denominator is the product of all the denominators. And the fourth type is where the new denominator is the LCD called the lowest common denominator of all the denominators. Now we're going to show you one by one how to work these types out. But first let's understand those just a little bit more. Here we have an example. Here we have three fractions that we're adding, and notice that the denominator in each of the three fractions is exactly the same. If that is the case, then summing them up is quite easy because you're going to write all of these, all the numerators over the one common denominator, which is the same as the denominator found in all three, and then you simply add the numerators together. So this becomes 2 plus 3 plus 7, which is 12, all divided by 5. So those are the easiest. You simply see, well, when all the denominators are the same, I simply just add the numerators and keep the denominator the same. But if the denominators are not the same, and that is the case of the next three types, the denominators will not be the same, you then take a look at the denominators. And then you'd see if the smaller denominators fit evenly into the largest of the denominators. In this case, the largest one is 20. Notice that 10 fits into 20 evenly twice, and 5 fits into 20 evenly four times, which means that the new denominator of the three fractions now will be equal to the largest of the denominators that are there. It doesn't matter if there's two fractions, three fractions, four fractions, that has to be the rule. The largest of all the denominators becomes the new denominator for all the fractions if the other denominators fit evenly into the largest one. Now notice the 7 over 20 doesn't change, but now you'll have to figure out what the new numerators will be for these two fractions now that you've changed the denominator to 20. And we'll show you later in another video how to do that. The third type is where all the denominators are such that the smaller ones do not fit evenly into the largest one. And it doesn't make any sense to find the lowest common denominator because in this case the denominators are all prime numbers which means that in that case, the new denominators of the three fractions simply becomes the product of all the denominators. 2 times 3 times 5 is 30, so we're going to change the denominators of all three fractions to 30, which is the product of all the denominators, and then we have to find the corresponding numerators to those three fractions so that the fractions are exactly the same value, just in a different format over a new denominator. Notice that in each case, you end up with all the denominators being the same, so that once you find out what the numerators are, the new numerators, you can simply add the numerators together over that common denominator, as we call it. And finally, you have a situation where the denominators are not all prime numbers, and that sometimes you can come up with a number other than simply multiplying all the denominators together, like we do over here. Uh, I'm sorry, like we do over here. So here, the, number, the denominators were small enough, and they're all prime numbers, that we could simply multiply them all together to get the new denominator. But imagine doing that here, multiplying 12 times 16 times 24, you would get a huge denominator, and it turns out you don't need to do that. You could, it still would work, but it would be a lot more work. It turns out we can actually find what we call the lowest common denominator. Remember, when we're adding fractions, we need to have common denominators. They have to be the same, but we want to find the smallest common denominator, meaning a denominator where all other denominators evenly fit into. In this case, look at 48. 12 goes into 48 exactly four times, 16 goes into 48 exactly three times, and 24 goes into 48 exactly two times. And that it's actually the lowest number we can come up with where all three denominators fit evenly into that and therefore it's called the lowest common denominator, and we're going to figure out how to do that in a very systematic approach. After you see it, you go, okay, that makes sense, but how did I figure out the number in the first place? Well, we'll show you the method of how to do that. 
Again, once you have a common denominator, you'll have to find new values for the numerator, such, as, such that these three fractions are exactly equal in value of the three fractions you began with. And then, of course, once they have a common denominator, you can then simply add all the numerators together, like we did in the first case. So those are the four different kinds of cases. The first case is really easy. You simply add the numerators. For the other three cases, you will have then to determine what the new denominator is. In this case, it's the largest of all the denominators. In this case, it's the product of all the denominators. And in this case, it's what we call the lowest common denominator, the smallest number where all of the denominators fit evenly into. Again, we'll show you how to actually do those three different types other than the first one, which is already a really easy one. So stay tuned and we'll have some videos explaining how to do that.